set off on episode 18 really it's kind of trip two um, we're heading where we're we heading down south to Bundaberg then cross to Birdsville catching up with people so we're parked up at the Blue Water Free Camp just 30k north of Townsville it's pretty chocker Patricia what have you been up to there what have you been up to so Patricia's making dinner. So, what is it called? Angel, Angel hair, hair pasta. with tomato and garlic mm -hmm. and avocado. avocado and all things delicious. Uh, yep, just some, uh... Right, here live in the caravan, so scene from MasterChef. Patricia, what are you doing? Hello, I'm doing uh, angel head pasta and that's what it should look okay. like. I'll send your message. I wasn't talking to you. Siri, she's so rude. That's what it should look like when I'm finished. So I've got a um, punnet of tomatoes, one avocado, some skinny pasta, and garlic infused olive oil. That is the most delicious stuff ever. And then I've got my water boiling here waiting to, for the pasta to go in. And then I will put my olive oil in, tomatoes, avocado and the pasta and shake it all around and voila we have dinner. Delicious! So you may wonder why we're cooking inside because we don't normally but if I pan back you can see we're actually parked on the road. This is Blue Water um, RV rest area. It's pretty good. I mean there's through there there's some fields but it is we got here at just after one it is absolutely chocker it's a pretty good rest area it's got kids playground um, toilets up that way is a dump point and there's lots of um, nice grassy sitting area but I guess we did choose to come during uh, school holidays so there's a little path down here to the river. I always feel brave going through long grass. I'll stamp my feet, keep my fingers crossed. Here we are. Beautiful. My crocs, a few little fishies, a little waterfall over there. Very nice. This is a spectacular dump point. I have to show you this. There's a sign there, five minute maximum. So you can't dilly dally. Gotta be, gotta be quick. But look at this. Accessible. Or even if you didn't want to bend over. That side. Isn't that just absolutely spectacular? And we are here at Lake Proserpine. $8 each a night, so 16 for the two of us. And we're looking out over there. Now the sun's lower a bit, but I think that's gonna be a pretty stunning sunset. There are toilets and showers here, and it's on the Peter Faust Dam. It's amazing. So tonight we have a new cooking setup. We've got the grill in place of the um, barbecue. So we got some Onions, garlic oil again. We're making skillet supper with veggie sausages and beefy sausages. There they are. And Patricia's just in the kitchen being the sous chef. Okay, this is going to be delicious. So, how is it? Good. Good. Very good. So, that's the one with <coughs> real sausages. And that's the little one with veggie sausages, but full of goodness. Bon appetito. Thank you. So this is the Flaggy Rock Community Centre. So we're here for the night. Absolutely beautiful. A lot of planted trees. Just uh, talking to Ray, he's the host with his wife um, Kay. So they're here all the time. So for $15 you've got this absolutely beautiful um, garden really, no other way of putting it. 
there are hot showers, toilets, the kitchen, barbecue, kids playground. So it's pretty nice. The it was originally it's kind of like over there. There was a school opened in 20 no 1916. 71 kids there originally um, when the rail line came through here. So in here there are crafts made by Kay who is Ray the caretaker's wife. This looks like a serious serious craft room. Two, three, four sewing machines and they actually undertake community activities here. Thywood Ten dollars a bag. We might grab some of that. So lots of things for sale, and some absolutely wonderful quilting. Isn't that amazing? Just absolutely beautiful. The detail on that. Look at I think it's amazing that people it's done by hand. Magic mushrooms. Maybe not today. So I'm just walking around the community centre. So Flaggy Rock from 1919 Flaggy Rock was served by um, what's called the Yokology or Yankology Railway Station. Then it was renamed Flaggy Rock in 1921 at the request of local residents. It's now been changed, um, now been closed. 7th of October 1916, the Rocky Dam State School was opened in Flaggy Rock. And these are the original amenities. The school was closed in 30th of December 1996 and is now used as the community centre. And Flaggy Rock, oops. And Flaggy Rock is at the northern end of the Clareview locality and the entire locality in 2016 had a population of 145. So I'm not sure if Flaggy Rock just has Ray and Kay the caretakers. So I'm here in Kershaw Gardens. It's a free camp provided by the city of Rockhampton. Now last year we were here and on this back row here we were here last March there were three or four of us today we got here at 12 15 thinking it was early but as you can see so the camp the city provides this free of charge and asks that you are um, self-contained which most people are occasionally apparently some people aren't Kershaw Gardens absolutely stunning did a walk through here last year and we probably will in a bit so the Capricorn District is the traditional home of the uh, Darumbal Aboriginal people. The British colonisation of the area was uh, began in 1853 and that was the Archer brothers, Charles and William. They were looking for grazing land, um, arrived in the rocky area, which makes it actually one of the oldest cities in um, Queensland. Population of Rockhampton in 2018 was 78,592 so it is actually the fourth largest city in the state outside the cities of the southeast. Today it's pretty much an industrial and agricultural centre and is the regional centre for central Queensland. Strong cattle industry and all here so very happy to have got in. It is the grand final of MasterChef so we wanted to make sure that we had TV coverage, good TV reception. And funnily enough, the people who pulled in next to us, they've actually come here specifically for that reason. So hello, we've been four days in Bundaberg visiting family and this is Wandai. It is a free camp right in town. It's, it's quite a few, probably a dozen vans here. It's pretty loud me on the stove and then we have this magical little thing called a pie oven and in here a little pie oven we have chips that are cold that are cold because it's not terribly efficient but it's cute oh. 
So here's the welcome to the rail trail camp. Enjoy the space without support, small tubes die. Heritage Museum, Timber, Ration Shed, Dairy Museum. Four sites worth a visit. Beautiful. And that is an amenities block. We didn't realise it was here. It's got showers and toilets. And it all looks uh, quite new. This is uh, part of the rail trail. It's a weighing thing. To weigh 12 tonnes, it says along the side. And then here there's an invitation promoting tourism, enjoy a few days, unhitch, have a good look about. Pretty lovely. So information here about the rail trail, Kilpie Van to Kingaroy. Nice little water features. Oh look. Apple bobbing. Actually it could be orange bobbing. And all sorts of other bobbings. Probably won't bother. So apparently a number of people wanted to get this closed, the um, RV park. But the good people of Wondai, we met somebody who told us all about this fort to keep it open because they appreciate the income that tourism brings. And I'm very, very glad they did. So are you liking it here, P? It's a nice little place. Lots of things. Look at that. Opened by Anastasia Palaszczuk's father. Thanks, mate. Obviously, she's a chip off the old block. <laughs> Pun intended. So we're at the Chinchilla showground. Um, $25 a night, but you've got power, water, amenities if you need them. Very nice caretakers. Beautiful spot. We're about to... Someone next door, but there's nobody for miles. We're about to walk into town, find a couple of geocaches. And that's it. Because we've got power, we've got... The air fryer back in action. So, Patricia, why have we got the air fryer back on? Why is that a good thing? Because we had uh, gale force winds last night. Blew, it, blew out the flames. It was a right pain in the ass. Had to cook the chips inside. So tonight, we can use this. Yes. Great invention. <laughs> Absolutely. And so are frozen chips. So we're just having a walk along Chinchilla High Street in the business centre and we came across this here in the melon capital of Australia. A sculpture of a melon. Beautiful. So we're at Chinchilla Weir. We had a look here, it's a free camp. A um, lot of soft looking black soil around. Looks quite nice. Yeah. What are you seeing, Bee? Awesome. I think the floodwaters must have come through here. Yeah. Must have overflowed. And come through here. Look, over there as well. Oh yeah. But look, how smart are they? <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. What did you think of the free camp? Oh, uh, not, not that good. It's a bit packed and a bit tight. Yeah. So. And yeah, I thought the, the black soil, I think you'd have to be careful when it's you came. Yeah, certainly it was a bit tight. And it's actually, it's not quite, for, it's a $10 donation. But we're loving it down at the showground. So we're here at the Cactoblastis monument. We've come about oh, nine kilometres out of town. No idea what it is, so we've come to find out. Have you found out? So, the Shanty, the Bug Farm. Birthplace of an environmental miracle at Chinchilla. The common pest pair, Opportunita inermis, by 1929 had covered an area much larger than all other species of prickly pear in Australia. The map shows the spread throughout Queensland in 1925. Experiments with chemicals, gases, and various insects had not been able to control the spread. The arrival of Cactoblastis cactorum in 1925 was met by scepticism by many, but within three years the results were obvious. The prickly pear moth, Cactoblastis cactorum, saved the day, saved Queensland and saved Australia. 
there he is. Go, Cacto Blastus. So we're here at the free camp, the Neil Turner Weir. I'm just um, looking a bit dark here because I'm walking towards the setting sun. Pea's all set here, ready for the Mother Nature's show. How you going there, Pea? Just looking forward to the fire. We've got this new fire pit et. It's cute. If I look at it in proportion to Patricia. Are you saying I'm fat? Not at all, not at all. It's cute because we didn't use the other one because it was quite big and heavy. So we're looking forward to having a little, oh, probably not much more than a candle. <laughs> but no, it's going to be lovely. So I'm just going to take you down here. There's heaps of space. Wow, down that way. Donation box. Um, there are amenities over there. People camped all up here. And I'll take you down to the river. So we're just outside Mitchell, which is in Western Downs District, the Maranoa region. Um, cattle, sheep farming. Census in 2016 had 1,061 people. So this land belongs to the Gangari peoples. Um, that some excavations were done around here and they found that people have been quite happily living here for about 19,500 years. And descendants of these original people do still live here. Got a little fire going. And as you can see, Patricia is dressed for being outside of Cairns Regional Council area. It's cold. <laughs> it's cold. You're cold? I'm cold. Yeah. And look, the fire's going to treat. Look at that. It might be small. Oops. Might be small, but it's burning a treat. It's keeping me warm. Yeah. Okay. Should get sunset shortly. Oh, it's just quite beautiful here. So we've been staying at Charlieville. This is terrific here, $10 um, if you're a non-member and $2 if you're a member of the CMCA, 